Have you ever tried to change your habits but failed to do so? If this has ever happened to you, please raise your hand. I see a lot of hands here. So the question is, why do so many people struggle with that issue? Why do so many people struggle to change? You probably also know this scenario. You're sitting there right before New Year's Eve thinking about how you're going to change everything the next year. You think about all the habits you're going to start, all the bad ones you will break, all the amazing goals you're going to accomplish. You say, this time will be different. This time I'm actually going to follow through. And then, just weeks or even days later, you find yourself exactly where you were before. Then what often happens is that you start to doubt yourself. You ask, what is wrong with me? Why wasn't I able to change? Therefore, you're put blaming your personality. But on the other hand, there are actually people that made those changes happen that have lost the weight, that have changed their life, that are now in a much better situation. But I don't believe that they're motivated or, or disciplined all the time, so they must be doing something different. So in reality, your personality is probably not the issue, but your system. Hello, I'm Nicholas Linnem, and I'm here to give you insights on habits and tips and strategies on how you can change them. I'm really passionate about this topic because I believe that habits are such an essential part of all of our lives. And changing your habits is the key to changing your life. But let me first tell you a little anecdote. 2003 was the year where the fate of the British cycling team changed forever. Because they hired a new guy named Dave Brailsford. You must know, the British cycling team was pretty damn mediocre for a very long time. As they haven't won a gold medal in the Olympics for almost 100 years, and performed even worse in the biggest cycling event there is, the Tour de France, where they haven't won even once in the whole history of cycling. So they hired this new guy, Dave Brailsford, to change that. And what was special about him was that he deeply believed in a theory called the aggregation of marginal gains. Basically meaning improving everything you do, also slightly, believing that if you add all those tiny changes up, it's going to lead to massive results. So, they did what you would expect a cycling team to do. They rubbed alcohol on the tires to improve grip. They redesigned bike seats to make them more comfortable. They got outdoor racers wearing indoor racing suits because they found them to be lighter and more aerodynamic. They got them to wear biofeedback sensors to see how they would adapt and respond to training. But then, they also did things you wouldn't expect them to do. They tested out different pillows and mattresses to see which ones would lead to the best sleep. They tested out different muscle gels to see which ones would lead to the best muscle recovery. They went even so far to train them to wash their hands properly to reduce the risk of infection. So, implementing that strategy rigorously, results came much faster than expected. In just five years' time, in the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, they won a whopping 60% of gold medals available. Just four years later, in the 2012 Olympics in London, they not only broke nine Olympic, but also seven world records. That same year, the first Britain ever won the Tour de France. And in the next six years, the Britons would win five more of those. This story just truly shows that tiny changes can be the basis for massive 
results. In today's society, we often believe that massive results require massive action. But we forget that we are already changing, also slightly, making decisions 1% better or 1% worse on a daily basis. But here's the thing. Most of your decisions aren't even consciously made by you at all because they're habitual. Therefore, if you want to gain control of your results, you got to take control of those habits. But let's take a small step back first and look at what habits actually are. A habit is a recurrent, often unconscious pattern of behavior acquired through frequent repetition. Basically meaning that you have done something so many times that it has become automatic, that you don't have to think about it. Therefore, you don't have to think about mundane things like brushing your teeth or how you're going to get to work. Because your mind, your mind does this to save energy and time. Your mind is basically programmed to make you lazy. And therefore, makes you follow the easy path. But habits are actually quite important. And we sometimes forget that fact because we're just following them so unconsciously. You know, even if you're in shape or out of shape is a result of your habits. Whether you're happy or unhappy, a result of your habits. If you're in a happy relationship or not, a result of your habits. But if they're so important, why do people fall into the trap of doing bad habits? This is because bad habits give you an immediate reward right now. If you eat a donut for now, you get an instant sweet taste of sugar running through your mouth and you still pretty much look the same in the mirror. Nothing has really changed. If you instead, for example, go to the gym, something we would call a good habit, you, it takes you more force, it is much less satisfying, and you'll probably be sore the next day, and also still look the same in the mirror. But if you keep on eating those tiny little sugar monsters, uh, those donuts, on a daily basis, you'll probably get fat. If you keep going to the gym, you'll probably get fit. So what it essentially comes down to is that for good habits, you pay the price right now and get the reward later. And for bad habits, you get the reward instantly, but pay the price later. So now the question becomes, how do we build good habits and break our bad ones? One of the most overlooked factors in changing our patterns of behavior is our physical environment. We do things simply because they're an option, simply because they're visible to us. Therefore, if you want to eat, for example, more fruit, get a bowl, put it right into your kitchen table, so you basically make it more visible. But for bad habits, you might to make them less visible. Like putting your phone into, the, into another room if you want to use it less. Or if you want to, for example, eat less chocolate, just put it back into your cupboard or into the basement so you see it less often. Another great strategy you can implement in easily into your own life is what's called implementation intention. Basically stating what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and where. Therefore, using that strategy makes you much clearer on what you're going to do. Like I said in the beginning, often people think it's the motivation that is lacking. But in reality, it's often the clarity that is missing. With that strategy, with using that technique, you can basically get rid of the decision-making process where you wonder if you'll feel motivated or not to do something. Therefore, people just wait around all day wondering if they'll feel motivated to go out to the gym or start picking up that book. 
By doing that action, you maximize your chances of following through. Another great strategy I personally implemented in my own life is called habit stacking, where you basically take a look at a habit you've already developed and add a new uh, habit that you want to build on top of that. For me, I used this to start reading more. I saw that each day after lunch, I was brushing my teeth. So now the rule became, after brushing my teeth, I will read two pages of my book. You see, I set the minimum to only two pages. Therefore, I made it much easier for me to start and it reduced the friction of me just not picking up the book at all. Often people fall into the trap of setting the minimum way too high, like saying, oh, I'll go to the gym 30 minutes each day or reading 30 pages a day, which they're often not likely to stick to. So because they say then if they don't have those 30 minutes, they'll do nothing at all. But by doing those two minutes, not only are you some getting something done, but you are also reaffirming that new identity you're getting with doing that action. By me reading those two pages, I'm reaffirming the identity of being a daily reader. Doing two push-ups reaffirms the identity of being a daily exerciser. So another great strategy you can, you can use is just focusing on one habit at a time. Researchers have found that a lot of people who achieve major breakthroughs in their life just focused on one habit at first and that habit had a domino effect on all other areas of their life. To summarize, I just want to say that tiny changes in your daily life, they don't add up, they compound. And therefore, their effect is very difficult to comprehend. At the end, I just want to say, don't be the victim, but the architect of your habits. Let time be your friend and not your enemy. Thank you. <laughs>